everything go on? Pe different students did different things. Mm -hmm. what, what's the thing in, in the school with, where the TVs? There it has it. Uh, uh, has it Hawkeyes. 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 Are you on the Hawkeyes? We're on the Hawkeyes, <laughs> and that students were, did that on their own. Uh, we had um, coverage in the local school newspaper. We've had coverage in the e-zine, which is, uh, I think, a faculty staff. We'll have coverage in the Lowell Connect, uh, the Lowell, the, the shuttle, which is, an, was, and all those things were done essentially by the students going in, negotiating, preparing the stories, making the meetings, um, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, and when you put all that together, you have um, something. I mean, I, I'll tell you it's a great experience, but they really need to. <laughs> Remember, you're on camera, and I haven't given you a grade <laughs> yet. <laughs> so um, you have hit the pavement out into not only the, at the university, but out into the local community? Yes. Yeah, it was actually, we set up, we started off with a business plan, which is something that you hear about all the time, and mm -hmm. teachers will say, okay, set up a business plan, it was pretend, and now we actually had to draw something up that would be, that could be executed and that would actually go through. And I, that was, you know, at the same, it, we felt that stress, which was amazing, you know, and people might think I'm nuts, but to be able to feel that stress and that pressure of this has to be done. The deadline. And then, yes, and that's, we had a drop dead date, got. and you know, and we, you know, Greg relied on me, I relied on Greg, and we, you know, we relied on other of our, our, our peers to get stuff done. So when we went back to the meeting table, it was as if we had a normal job and this was our, our, our project and we had to get it done. And so it was stressful throughout the process, but at the same time we learned a lot of things. And what we learned, you can't, you can't teach in a class unless you're physically going through it, which right. was amazing. Right. Steven? Um, how do you feel now after after the semester's gone by? Is it a liberating feeling after you've uh, <laughs> I feel like I can conquer the world. <laughs> <laughs> no, Good. honestly, um, I, I, I'm ready to go. I mean, mm -hmm. I can't tell you how just being able to, that rejection feeling, which Greg talked about, is one of the most, it's, it's something that everyone's scared of, and I'm not scared of that. I've, I've gone Have through it. Have you been rejected out of the community <laughs> by, <laughs> by an employer yet? Uh, you know, it's just that feeling, that fear yeah. of going up to someone and saying, listen, you know, we have this idea, would you buy into it? Mm -hmm. And then having someone either not capture what you're trying to say and then learning how to get that person to understand is something that language, that difference in um, an opinion or anything that we bumped into was definitely a roadblock that we came across and it's just been amazing. It's really cool to hear you talk about this because, I mean, I've seen Queer Eye for the Straight Guy and that show and makeover shows. You never hear about all the processes that go into making, you know, the person over. So, <laughs> um, all the behind the scenes part of it. So yeah, There's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think there would be either um, between marketing and, yeah. and having to, some of us are double majoring in marketing. Mm -hmm. Some people actually are majoring in finance and we actually talked to local radio stations and also um, uh, media to see how much it would cost a vendor to publicize their um, their business online on television. So when we talked to the vendors, we had actual statistics. We could give them numbers and figures. So there was a lot of things behind the scenes that um, we did a lot of legwork that you know, in case someone needed to know, we can sit there and prove to them, listen, we want you, we want you to contribute to this, and this is what you're getting. Mm -hmm. Greg, if you think that there's one thing that's really important that you've gotten out of all of this, over that you've learned through the process of Dr. Moser's class, what would it be? Uh, I, th I think we touched on a little bit with the you know the fear of rejection and things like that. Have you been rejected when you go? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you get a door slammed in the face? <laughs> no, it's the the cold call, and you oh. get the rejection from that when you have an idea and somebody just doesn't interpret it right, and they tell you, no, I, that doesn't sound good. It's not worth it to me, but. You know, so that was a big part of it, but it was taking all the marketing things we've learned and all the other uh, items we've learned over our four years here at the university, and you know, it's putting them to use. It wasn't just writing it down and getting an A on a test or getting them right or wrong on the test. It was you're gonna learn as you go now because it's real life. So, Dr. Moser, have, have the students come back to you, and how do you like get them to go back out into the field? I mean, are you coaching them along the way and saying, I you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I don't have to do much of that. Yeah. I mean, when we get, get a rejection quota, but well, we've got a few of them along the way, and we've had some disappointments along right. the way. In other words, we've had scheduled meetings with people we thought would be really helpful for the project who don't show up for the meetings. We've um, had um, a buy-in from uh, a particular vendor, and then the vendor changes um, his or her mind. Uh, you come into class, and everyone has the steam let out of them. But we have a rule in our class called the 24-hour rule which means you know you can feel bad for 24 hours, but <laughs> tomorrow you get up, you look at the project plan, you look at the drop dead date, and you say what needs to get done, and okay, what can we do now? And I think that 
probably, in a nutshell, is probably the most, there's two, I think, really important learnings. One is, what do you do now, given the reality that we're in, and closing. Um, you can talk about closing, but closing the deal is really, I think um, we've all had a very good experience in seeing what that means and how you do it, and it doesn't necessarily look like what you think it was going to be, but um, we're here, we have our resources in place. If you had asked us what those resources were on day one, they look different than when you imagined, but they're here and we're doing it. So. Speaking of closing, we're just going to take a short break and we'll be back in a couple of moments. And uh, with us today we have Dr. Martin Moser from the University of Massachusetts Lowell and we have several students, students from uh, Dr. Moser's business management, strategic business management class and uh, students in my news writing class here. So thank you. Hi, I'm Cassie Rubico and I'm here with Lee Jackson. Lee's an English major at UMass Lowell and I'm here with four students in the graduate transformation project. They are all seniors and to my right is Carol Rogie. She's a management and marketing major. Matthew Horanis, who's a psychology major. And Kristen Kucher, who's a medical technology major. And Matt Kenny, who's a business management major. Thank you for joining our show. Thank you for joining the show, Lee. Um, I'd like to start with um, a question regarding your philosophy of your parents and how you think that this transformation is going to change that and what you'd like to see for a change. Well, last semester um, we had to come up with a metaphor for how we looked and mine was that I was like tarnished silver, you know, when you bother to polish it up, it looks okay, but it's not always worth the hassle and I feel like I just like to do more than just look good on paper. I've worked really hard at school to, you know, get my good grades and I walk in and don't really present that image. So, I would like to change that. And what do you, what do you want to what are you looking to change? How 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 do you want to present yourself in the professional professional world? Well, you just see those ladies walking around who just look so pulled together and just have it working out and I would like to just look put together. And I don't yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> Well, I think the frog is pretty put together. Um, okay, Matthew, how about you? Uh, I just dress to be comfortable, feel comfortable, and uh, I guess I got to look more professional before I go out into the business world. What type of career goals do you have that, and how do you think that this program will prepare you well, for parents -wise? before I'm interviewed for my future career, I need I mean, I can't go in sweatpants, so <laughs> I need to get more professional looking. I had to cut my hair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how about you, Kristen? Um, well, most of the time I'm just in scrubs, and when I'm not in scrubs, I'm just in sweatpants and comfortable clothes, so I feel like for the professional setting, I need to look more professional and be more pulled together. Okay. Matt, now you're also a student in the strategic yes, I am. business class. All right, why don't you tell us how you got involved, why you got involved in this part of it? Well, basically, uh, what my classmates had told me just one day, they were looking around and said, you know what, why not put Matt in the project? Because I, I, I'm a pretty familiar person around the campus. I know a lot of people, people would recognize my face. Um, and I guess I could use a <laughs> makeover. I mean, I am looking to get a, a, an office job, a business job. No. I don't really, I've never really had to present myself like a, you know, really clean cut looking kind of person. I've never really had one of those, you know, really professional jobs that you get with a college degree. So I need to figure out how to, you know, wear a right kind of suit and tie a tie up and cut my hair, I guess. <laughs> so what is your philosophy Sorry. on your appearance? Like when you go out every day, what do you think? When you get dressed up to come to school, what do you? <laughs> it reminds me of uh, this, uh, the other Easter Sunday, I was dressed similar to this to go out to Easter dinner with my family, with more, with more family at a, at, a, at, a, at a friend's house. And my father said, he looked at, my, he looked at me and he looked at my mom and he said, well, what's the dress code for today? And I looked at my dad and I said, the dress code is take it or leave it. <laughs> so I could go back to sleep or I could go out to eat with you guys. So I guess I'm really, I'm just very casual, extraordinarily casual. I'm not really looking to impress anybody, but I'm going to have to impress those people that are going to decide whether or not I get a job. So. so how do you think 